Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. Come on in, guys. We got a lot to talk about. Come on. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. So glad that you have uh, decided to join me again. I really appreciate you being here. I really do. Thank you for thumbs upping, thumbs downing, commenting, rating, sharing all the wonderful things you do to show uh, your, you know, to interact with me here. I really appreciate it. So guys, Alyssa Farah is coming back as we suspected. I can't imagine what life must have been like for you, but you eventually got out of there. What, what did it? What made you say, oh, this, no. Well, a few things. So I was asked to serve in the Trump White House in April of 2020, so the height of the pandemic. I was actually the the Department of Defense press secretary before then. It was my dream job, speaking on behalf of the U.S. Armed Forces. Uh, But I was asked to go and serve. We were dealing with unprecedented crises in this country. We were hearing that we were going to have a Pearl Harbor a day of loss of life. And I thought if there was anything I could do to even marginally help, I couldn't say no. I ended up staying for seven months uh, through the election. I hadn't originally intended to stay the whole time. And let me be honest with you, it was extremely challenging. Um, I think you guys have a sense of what it could have been, what it was like in there. You know, a lot of the books are accurate, some aren't, but... Uh, I strongly believe in public service. If a Democrat administration asked me to serve, if a Republican one did, I would say yes and I would go in. Yeah, and for those of you who don't remember, that was just a snippet of her appearance on the show the very first time she was chemistry testing, which actually, guys, was in October. Now, for those of you who are new uh, to My View on the View, you may not know this, but we made a decision here as a community that... Um, At the start of season 25, we knew they were going to have to fill Meghan McCain's seat on the show. And so Brian Tedda, the executive producer, when they were doing their press junkets for season 25, he told the press exactly what they were looking for in the next co-host. And when he was giving that particular press interview, Sonny, Joy, and Whoopi were sitting there too. And they also chimed in and shared what they wanted to see in their co-worker. So from that conversation to the press, I developed a seven point criteria list, seven things the show is looking for. Actually, I would say I think five of those were what what they were looking for. And two were things that I knew uh, just from my research about the show all these years as a vlogger that, you know, most viewers wanted. We know as viewers, we're not going to get everything we want, but we definitely wanted someone who was respectful. We wanted someone who could remain professional in the heat of battle at least 80% of the time, because we're not asking for 100% professionalism. None of us are perfect. Asking for 100% would be asking for a perfect co-host. And we know that doesn't exist because there is no perfect co-host, just like there is no perfect woman. And so we have that seven point criteria list. And um, so every single woman who they chemistry, chemistry tested, excuse me, I have done a seven point review of each woman. And if you're listening on YouTube where all of that material is here, all you have to do, like if you don't have anything else to do, (laughs) just scroll, 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 and you can listen to each of those. Now, Just as a reminder for the rest of us, um, Alyssa is going to be there for three days this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, just like Tara Setmayer was there last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, don't forget, guys, that Alyssa Farah is 32, so she is a millennial, so she fits that category. Um, And also, you know, she's a Republican. Um, She, I won't say, is really, really popular in the conservative arena in terms of younger, uh, the millennial base but she is known. And don't forget, this young lady was in a very precarious situation and they really, really raked her over the coals the first time she was there because she started out in the White House in the uh, Trump administration as the director of strategic communications, like what we heard her say there. And then for some reason, which, you know, they didn't accept her explanation. And most of us, I remember, uh, didn't accept her explanation either. Even after, you know, having done that job, When she was asked to be the president's assistant, she took that position. And as Sonny said that day on the show, and many of you will remember this because it trended that day, Sonny asked her, by that time, everyone knew who he was. You know, we'd had Charlottesville. We had all these crazy things. 
and you you were willing to transfer jobs, you know, and it just, you know, we just couldn't make sense of it. And the women couldn't either. But, you know, to each his own. So anyway, so she is coming back. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing her again. Now, for those of you who want to hear my very first seven point criteria performance review of her, you'll just need to check in the description box under this particular podcast on YouTube. I've made sure to include the link. So if you want to hear my review of her, that's what you're, you'll have to go there. So, you know, like I said, I'm excited to see her again. Um, I liked her personality the first time. Um, one of the things I liked about her is that she wasn't easily intimidated by the rest of the women. You know, when you're 32 and you're sitting at a table with a woman who's 79, a woman who's 66, Sarah is 43 or 44, something like that. Or maybe she's 45. She's somewhere in her 40s. And Sunny is 53. And I don't believe Anna was there either of the days. Because remember, the, originally everyone was just getting two days. Now it seems like everybody's going to get three days. They're giving them an additional day. Um, you know, 32 up against all of that, you could be very intimidated. You know, you've got a pop star icon, Whoopi Goldberg, sitting there. You've got a high profile uh, prosecutor, Sonny Hostin, um, who tried cases, you know, <laughs> in federal court. You've got Anna Navarro, who's also has a law license, um, a law degree, and, and she has been a Republican strategist since day one, right, in her career. And then you've got, you know, uh, Mrs. Joy Behar there, you know, and of course, you know, you've got Sarah. So, and Sarah's not really intimidating anyway, because as we've said, even though she's a sweet person and she's a lovely girl, she does tend to play it safe on the show. And that's just, it is what it is, you know. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear a balanced truth about this, but that's the truth, like it or not. She's sweet. She's great. We know she belongs there. We know she's the balance. But the other side of the coin, we flip it over is she plays it safe. OK, so I will just tell you guys, I think this is going to go well for Alyssa. Mm -hmm. I do. Now, you guys know my favorite millennial has been Jane Coaston because she was just, you know, I think out of all the millennials, although all the girls have seemed to be t were smart, Jane's intellectual knowledge was her, her. I don't know. To me, it just seems like she was not only really emotionally mature for her age. She also seemed to have, you know, a, a really, you know, just insurmountable level of knowledge. And she, she struck me as someone who's probably been a nerd all of her life. You know, someone who that's at least that's what we used to say. And I don't know what the term would be now. Uh, we, I think people would say that she's well read, but, you know, just someone who's always had her, her head on straight and someone who has always studied and read and she's able to discuss any topic. And you don't find that in a lot of younger people. You know, a lot of these millennials are these girls, they're bubble heads, you know, uh, they, if they don't have on a pound of makeup and listen, I love makeup. I used to want to be a makeup artist, so I don't have anything against makeup. I'm just making a point that you wonder what's going on here. If they don't have on 50, you know, lashes, you know, on one eye and to where they can barely keep their eyes open, you just wonder what's going on here. Um, but Jane Coaston, like most of these girls, she was pretty, she was, she was smart, but she just was on a different level to me. There was something about the way she was communicating with them. Like if I didn't know she was a millennial, I wouldn't have thought she was because she was hanging with them, you know, you know, every round, so to speak. But Alyssa did a good job. She did a real good job her first time around. Um, now let's talk about this before I let you guys go. Um, what we know so far is that we know they're looking at at least three out of the 12 women they've chemistry tested so far seriously because we had Mia Love return. Remember that, guys? I know so much has happened. We kind of forgot about Mia, but Mia Love returned. Uh, we also had Tara Setmayer return. And now we have Alyssa Ferris. So we know those three ladies are in the in, being seriously considered because they came back for a second chemistry test which is a good, good, good sign, you know, and, um, you know, let's see, we're in February. So we'll probably see one more person this month, um, that we, we have seen before. And I suspect that person will be, um, was it Morgan Ortegas? I can't remember who, who I think it's going to be. I had a list, but I don't have it with me now. So guys, those are my thoughts. I, I I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see her. Um, if, if they're going to choose a millennial, I first would say Jane Coaston, if not Jane, Alyssa Farah, because Alyssa also had a very, um, upbeat personality. She seemed to really, um, 
you know, be able to flow with them well, even though she's very, very young. And even though she doesn't have a whole lot of experience, she seemed to have the personality um, and the willingness to learn that could could compensate for that, if that makes any sense. So guys, that's all I've got for you today. Listen, what are you guys thinking in regards to Alyssa Farah? If you, especially if you were with me when she was there the first time in October and we did her review together, what do you guys think? I mean, um, are y'all looking forward to seeing her tomorrow or do you think it's going to be a bust or a bang? I think it's going to be a bang. I think, I think the ladies probably really liked her. They really felt like, like I said, she, she, what she didn't know, she'd be, she'd be a quick learner. Um, and, um, you know, remember she was really nervous because this is live TV. Remember we talked about that. We could see her hands shaking. Um, that's not a criticism. I mean, I told you guys, listen, when I get nervous, I shake. A lot of people sweat. Some people cry. Some people, you know, get physically ill. So all of some of us, not all of us sometimes um, have these physical manifestations when we're in, when we're in very new uh, situations. And so uh, we people can see that. But what we talked about was as the show went on, she got more and more comfortable. Listen, doing live TV is not easy. I couldn't do it. Do you do any of you guys think you could do live TV? Because see, my thing is you can't mess up. You know, they say you can mess up, but then when you mess up, they, they, the media like kills you for it. You know what I mean? So I would prefer a show, one of those other shows. I can't remember if it's the talk or the real where they pre record you and they could just edit out any crazy or stupid thing you say. And then nobody knows it, but you and the people on set. So I think I would flourish in that kind of a situation. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in to the podcast. Listen, let us know in the comments what you're thinking about Alyssa Fair. Do you think that if they do go with a millennial, that she's going to be their first choice? Let us know. This is My View on the View, a podcast all about ABC's The View, where I do make the views table relatable. I'll talk to you later. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard.